Okay, what a ride. How does it feel to be, be here after all these years? You want to start, Hav? Um, it feels, of course, um, great. Um, I mean, we had such a fun ride, a long ride, fun yeah, ride yeah. with the bridge, but it also actually felt very, very good to, to end it uh, yeah. after Series 4. So yeah. it's, it's, all, it's all positive, actually. Mm. What about for you, Sophia? I saw that you were quite moved. Yeah, here. I, d I have to say it was really moving to, to hear these uh, reflections from the audience. Mm. Uh, in this way, uh, yeah, I was moved, and I am uh, like in whole. I'm moved about getting the chance to reach out to so many people mm. in this, uh, to connect like this is. I realize it's rare. Mm. Yeah, so, so it feels good and uh, at the right time, but it feels. Yeah, I can feel it. Mm. So I think we should start by by l looking at the trailer for season four, and then we. Continue. So I wanted to start by asking you, Hans, uh, the original, like the first idea, uh, it was Bjorn Stein and Mons Morland that came up with that, the creators of Midnight Sun that we presented a couple of years uh, go here at the, the seminar, um, and then, but you came on board very fast, and then you, you created and developed it. Could you tell us about um, these first steps of, of creating Ro? Well, we, we, uh, we were asked uh, from the, the Swedish production company, Film Lance, uh, and they basically just gave us two rules. They, it had to be uh, half Danish, half Swedish, mm. and it had to be ten episodes, uh, ten hours of a, of, a, of a thriller. And that was it. We were pretty free to do whatever okay. we wanted. And the first thing we, we had to decide was how to get, because we've seen quite a few not perhaps so good examples of when you try to put two countries together or you see, you, you see the obvious co-production that mm. you need to have people from different countries into the show. So we said, how can we do that? And it feels like a very normal thing to do that a Danish police officer and a Swedish police officer both investigate the same case. And that's when, which was the pretty much where we started um, because we wanted that to feel quite natural. And then we came up with, let's put a, a body exactly on the only land border we have with Denmark, which is the bridge. Mm. So it was 50, half the body was in Denmark, half the body was in Sweden. Mm. Then they have to come from both sides, very good. Mm. Uh, and they have to investigate that mm. until we then realize that, but if it's a Swedish victim, it will be a Swedish case anyway, mm. even if it's halfway in Denmark. So that's why we put a Danish body Half, we put it in half, and then half of it was Swedish and half of it was Danish. <laughs> uh, then they have to investigate it as a team. So, and then, then we just went from there, actually. That, but that was the first thing we did, and then we... There was a lot of work with it, because the first, the first storyline we did together was a little bit more mythological, it was a little bit more kind of the, the, the bad guy, the villain in it, had a different agenda a uh, little bit more like trying to create a kind of Sodom and Gomorrah situation where where the both cities should kind of fall, burn in the end. And so, so uh, and nobody really liked that. So instead of going bigger and bigger and bigger with each episode, we went smaller and smaller and smaller. And then at the end, it was basically just about Saga, Martin and Martin's mm. son. Um, so, and then, then we got greenlit. And of course, Saga and Martin are, are really the cornerstones of of the first uh, seasons and and uh, for those of you that were here this morning and listening to to Ran Teleb, the creator of Homeland, he, he talked about that and he had this analysis that Saga is the head and Martin is the heart of kind of the same character. Does that resonate with you as the creator? Well, um, we didn't think about it that way when we created them. We just thought that they they should be they could should be two different characters, which that obviously is very much. But we didn't really think of it, let have one character and split it into two and they <laughs> kind of, they represent two different things of the same character. We never actually thought about that. We just thought about what would be, make the best dynamic, what could we work with for 10 and now 
38 hours, what can we work with? What, what would be the best dynamic between our characters? And then that's basically Martin and Saga. Mm. So I wanted to ask both uh, Bo and Anders, uh, what were your expectations when you started out with Braun? And did you have any kind of clue how massive it was going to get? No clue at all. We, we, we were just trying to make a series that would work uh, on prime time in uh, both Sweden and Denmark. I mean, that was our ambition and uh, it's never been done before. So we thought if we managed with that, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> you did a little bit more than that. <laughs> yeah, and, and then it ended up like this. I don't mm. know what happened. Mm. Bo, do you, have, do you have a comment? No, I agree. It's the same. Please use that. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so, of course, this is a co-production between Filmlands in Sweden and, and Nimbus Film in, in, in Denmark. Uh, what have you learned about putting together a creative team? Well, never, never assume anything. I think uh, actually our line producer in the first season, uh, Christian Huberstorfer, who is I think here. Oh yeah, Christian is here from SVT. He, there he, put he is up waving. On, on, on in, in the production uh, facilities, he put up a sign and it and it wrote, "Assumption is the mother of all fuck ups." Yep. And that's exactly what we did during the first season. <laughs> it was one after the other, and because. So could you give us some examples? You always want to hear about the fuck ups. Yeah. Well, we have a. a, a Fun example, you can say we had one uh, one night shooting the first season, and and um, we Charlotte, the uh, director, she called me and said, "Bo, you know, we're not going to be able to make the program tonight. We need an extra night." And I said, "Well, it's we can't give you an extra night. We have to leave this uh, location, so it's kind of there's no way back. It's too expensive to establish again. So you know, you have to make the best of it and see what you can what you can do." And she uh, and the team. They managed to make everything that was planned, which was fantastic. Um, so the next day, I asked the production to to buy some flowers for Charlotte, with a little card saying "Thanks for a great night, love, Anna's and Bo." <laughs> I thought that was funny and appropriate. And <laughs> two two hours later, Anna's calls me and says, "What have you done?" I said, "What do you mean? You you bought flowers for Charlotte? Yes, from you and me." And Anna says, "Now we have to buy flowers for everyone else on the team." I said, what are you talking about? Well, we're in Sweden. You can't just buy flowers for the director, you know. Everybody has to have flowers. So we, we come from different cultures and different work cultures. And, and um, we had to learn that, I would say, step by step in the first season. Yeah. And it's funny because there's a lot of, in the, in the dialogue of Brun, there's a lot of kind of references to Swedish and Danish culture, especially Danes talking about Swedish culture. So it's fun that it's more. So what's, who's? It's, so, it's yours. <laughs> you are the only person that will actually be excused for that. <laughs> So, so, Sophia, I wanted to ask you, I was uh, watching a couple of weeks ago, it was the third episode of, of uh, the final season, and Saga is at the therapist, and, and she says to the therapist everything that's happened to her, and it's like, okay, that's a lot. So you went through a lot with this character, and it's an iconic character. Can, can you talk about how, how you created Saga originally? <laughs> Um, yeah, I thought a lot about um, something that uh, that we talked about quite early on was that uh, her conflict inside of her is that he's, she's always looking for love, but she can't have love. So that's something that is I've been able to work on through all the episodes. Uh, and I think that might also be the reason why people who aren't at all like Saga can also anyway identify with mm -hmm. her. Uh, but to become her uh, demanded to step completely out of my, um, of me mm. and start thinking the other way around. So it was a struggle to begin with and I actually had to, to see uh, some of the first episodes again, just to see uh, how we were struggling with, you know, the to find to tune in exactly. But but then when we found the exact um, level, mm. it wasn't so hard anymore. Mm. I mean, it's it's been a struggle, but when I got to knew her, it wasn't so hard. Mm. 
So, of course, you're, you're very different from your character, but what, what will you miss most with Saga and playing Saga? Hmm. I, th the thing I will miss is the, I mean, the team and working together and everything. But with Saga, I feel uh, quite, quite um, done, not done with her, but we have been exploring her so much. So I, I won't miss her in that sense. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, this is kind of maybe this question to ask you because you're the makers of the show and I guess it's hard to get any kind of distance to your own work, but what do you think, do you have any ideas about what are the unique elements that makes Braun so successful and makes it into an excellent show, not only a very good show? Hans, do you want to speculate? Uh, well, I want to speculate, but I think it's a few. I think we were, uh, to, to start with, I think we were actually quite lucky timing-wise mm. when we came out. We, um, we uh, came in the, the aftermath of Stieg Larsson has just made it really big mm. uh, worldwide with uh, Go With The Dragon to Two. Uh, the Killing has been out from Denmark yeah. before us. Everybody was kind of looking at Scandinavia to see what would be the next big thing, and mm. that was us. And yeah. that was... And, so that combined with that we actually had a really good show, I think was very, very useful for us. Uh, then I think the key element is, I think what we miss, uh, what we don't really think about is that we're quite exotic, especially abroad. I mean, we are quite exotic countries to, to look at, um, mm. especially in, in UK when I meet viewers there. They, they think, it's, they, think they, they get a kind of a peek into Swedish and Danish society. They don't really know which one is which, no. but but th that and they, they don't th know that Swedes actually don't understand. No, but they don't even know. Way. I mean, uh, yeah. quite a few, amazingly many, actually doesn't even know that we speak two different languages yeah. in the show. So they think it's the same language. They don't. They can't hear the difference. Yeah. So, uh, but that they were quite exotic. And then, but I think the main thing is we we had a certain visual style. We were very easily to single out visually. Mm. Um, we had a good mix of plotting. Uh, multi-plotting, storytelling, and uh, personal strands throughout the show. And then I think which is the biggest, the biggest reason for us is that we had uh, Saga and Martin. Mm. We had two really, really compelling characters that people wanted to spend a lot of time with. Yeah. And, and uh, that leads me to my, my next question, which is that after season two, you changed the main male character, the Danish character. So Martin was out and in came Henrik to Lindahart. How did that affect the dynamics of the show? Anders, do you want to elaborate on that? I mean, that, that was uh, the worst part of these t 10 years, actually. Um, it was a struggle because we, um, you have already been written the four first episodes. They were done. We were going to start shooting. And of season three. Yeah. yeah. So, and then we had this thing coming up, uh, and um, yeah, you have to rewrite uh, four episodes. I mean, some of the crime stories you can, we could keep, but the, the character story, we were bringing in a new character, so you have to change all that. And, and I mean, it was very tough for you, Sofia, standing all there by yourself for a while. And, um, but now, when, I, when we look back on it, I think, it goes for all of us. I think that was the best thing that could happen to the show, actually. Mm. So uh, today I'm lucky that mm. it happened. Mm. Please add. Yeah, I think that one reason why uh, we have managed to keep the quality so high has been because we've been on our toes from to, to one another, the countries. And this was like after the second season, it was successful. So it was really good to get up get us up on the toes again with mm. this. But it wasn't comfortable in any way. <laughs> so, uh, we were uh, luckily enough, we already decided that, we, because we had the full storyline and we had the first four episodes already written with Martin in it. Uh, but luckily we decided that series three should be very much saga, fo focus on saga, very much saga orientated with the whole storyline. And we could keep that, of course, because mm. Sophia was still with us. So um, we were, but then as I, well, like as they say, I think it, it was a little bit of a blessing in disguise because 
we were we were we had to think completely new we had to say what if we want to bring in another character we can't just bring in another martin yeah. we can't do that so we what can we do what do we need to show especially new sides for saga because what would would help us to tell that story so yeah. it was really so when you look at it it was horrible that summer but when you look at it it was actually a good thing happening for us yeah so why did you decide to make the fourth season the last season? Do you want to hold on to the mic and um, go because for it? Um, well because I think we we uh, as, as Sophia said I think we were are quite done now we had one more story to tell and we we wanted because we always thought that we ended every series with a kind of an ending and then we realized that people look at it as a more of an open ending. Mm. But so this time, okay. So if we know that this is the final series, let's just let's end it. Really end it this time. Mm -hmm. So we got a chance to end it. And I also have to say, I think, I think, I mean, there's no real reason to make series five, six, seven, eight just because you can. Mm -hmm. um, and I think quite a few show overstays their welcome a bit. And it's very few series that you look around and say, yeah, they really peaked series six. That was the best series that I've ever seen <laughs> of that show. So I just think we, 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 we didn't want to fall into the, the kind of slope where people saying, well, it used to be really good. Mm. It's still okay, but it used to be really good. We didn't want that. So yeah. we just ended it. From my perspective, I mean, uh, you, we had a meeting and you came up with kind of my love subject identity. Yeah. And then... I knew I had to. So, I mean, doing that with Saga and with this world at the moment where we are in the world right now, that's the perfect ending of it, I think. Oh, three episodes left. <laughs> you bastards, you know how it's gonna, <laughs> gonna end. So, um, on a more kind of a per personal note, um, what is it, um, what are you most proud of? with having been part of this, this series? <laughs> Anders, you want to start? Yeah, but... Abs oh, do, hello? Is it here? Yeah, oh, it's okay, okay, yeah. it's working. Um, actually, one thing that I'm very proud of is that something you mentioned, that we managed to keep and to, 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 to raise the, the level of the quality every season and... and, and uh, both with, with getting more audience, uh, raising the, the numbers on the audience, and also reviews and so on. So, and I, I really feel feel that uh, for season four is is the best uh, of all seasons. So that's something that I'm proud of because it's really tough. I mean, it was a success all, all already season one, and it's very hard to to do it again and do it better. Mm. So, so that's one thing. Mm. Hans. Mm. Well, um, um, I don't know if proud. Yeah, well, I am probably proud, but I, I mean, I really love this show. I have loved everything with it, uh, and it's given me so many, so many good times, and so much. It's really given me so much. Uh, but I think I, I, what I, if I have to be proud about something, I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I'm very proud that we kind of made an impact in in popular culture, mm -hmm. in the 2011 till now. It's which is quite hard because the competition is is vast mm. to say the least uh but then i'm also i'm 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 also very i'm not very proud yeah i'm happy about that we created saga actually i think she has meant uh she has meant a lot to not only people who are kind of identify with her condition but but also i think as a female lead uh she has meant qu quite a lot mm. uh, and and i'm proud of being able to do that mm. sofia yeah, I, it's got to do with you, what you just said. Uh, two things. Uh, first of all, all the people with Asperger's I've met. Yeah. It's been amazing. But the other thing is that I met with some students in England, uh, theatre students, and they said to me that, uh, do you realise that your character's character is a female feministic role model? And that made me really proud. So that's what you created, guys. Bo. <laughs> yeah, just really happy uh, to have been part of this journey. And I, I have to say I'm also proud of um, 
that it's been such a joy because uh, we have worked with really good, really clever people and we've managed to create, I would say, a family uh, feeling or atmosphere. So it's uh, always been a lot of fun coming back during a new season and uh, just a pleasure ride. And it seems like it's been a very good co-production, but I, I still want to ask both you and Anders, uh, what would have been different if you had produced it by yourself? Uh, a lot of things. I mean, you should never do a production like this, a cross-border production that they, by, uh, like this, on your own, sitting in one country trying to do something for two countries with mm. with 50% of the actors coming from from Denmark. It's it's impossible, and that's something we learn over and over again that Crazy you really things. have to. Uh, you, you work have to work closely together. To, to to get the right uh, tone on 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 the language and culture culture things and so on. So that's mm. been very important. Mm. What would you say, Bo? Yeah, you can say it's it's more complex, um, but but because it is a cross border production, what Anas is saying is really important because uh, we couldn't have done it uh, alone. And uh, I would also say when when we when we have had problems or challenges, it's been such a pleasure having a partner to be able you know to discuss everything with and mm. and just rethink and um yeah work together with big pleasure mm. and personally for me um to start up working with Anas and film Lens, you know it was uh, they have so much experience working with uh, scripted uh, television from before which we hadn't so we could basically plug into their hard drive and uh, really uh, pick up a lot of knowledge and experience that's mm. good so it's been uh, almost a decade of, of, of doing this. And I guess uh, it's kind of like being born anew or something. So I really want to know, what are you going to do now when you're not caught up with do, doing drone? I'm going to ask uh, Sofia first. Well, well, uh, I have... What's um, happening? Yeah, a lot of things are happening, but I'm not allowed to tell anything mm. about anything, <laughs> of course. <laughs> but on the 9th of February, I will announce something so it's <laughs> but I'm develop yeah. both developing projects and uh, which I'm not gonna star in all of them mm. uh, and I'm gonna uh, also act okay. uh, yeah mm. um, I am at the moment um, writing um, well the second series of Marcella I just finished that mm. a, a British TV show I'm, I'm yeah. doing uh, which is gonna air in February and I am now currently writing uh, our sixth novel. I'm writing novels together with a, a colleague. So I'm doing that till summer. And then, uh, yeah, as you say, the bridge is over. So I need to, to get a job. <laughs> so uh, I am actually, I'm actually, uh, so, no, I'm going to create, I'm going to create something completely new uh, starting this summer. Uh, I'm going to create drama. A, a new show. Yeah, okay. new drama. Yeah. We really look forward to hearing more about that. Anders? Yeah, why not go fishing? But uh, no, um, I'm doing a, a three, three uh, pieces, uh, one hour thing for uh, SVT. Mm. Uh, it's going to be nice to do something small, like <laughs> yeah. that, just three hours. Yeah. Mm. And boy. Yeah, same thing. We we work on our uh, feature films and, uh, and new uh, TV series slates at Nimbus, mm. developing, financing, producing. Mm. Well, I'm sure we're going to have you all back on stage with other projects. So, Sophia, you wanted to... Yeah, I, the, uh... I, I reflected on something that I wanted to share. That is, uh, I don't know if this is rare or not, but when we started The Bridge, uh, we, you had, like, first you had no... Green light, and you'd hired the director and the uh, designer and everybody. So, and, and I, I, I've been thinking a lot about how much that affected the result afterwards. That they had the director, set designer, photographer, they had half a year just to work on the look and the world of the bridge. So, as an actor, I felt coming into the world of the bridge was something else than I've experienced ever before. So that's maybe something people could um, start to think about. How can you, yeah, mm. it's just an interesting thing, I think, yeah. And, and I also want to, in this uh, context, recommend there's a one-hour documentary made about 
the making of drawn that goes into to the visual looks and and everything of, of of the series. So I thought that was a really interesting watch to 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 see that one as well because it's very well thought out. Everything from color schemes to what kind of nature or not nature that is being uh, shown and and so on. So so that's really interesting. So. I want to thank you all for coming, and I want to thank ZDF for these mini versions of Saga's car that you will all get to, to, to bring back with you home. Thank you. So thank you for coming and sharing. OK, so. Yeah. So now we're going to finish off with taking a little look at the, the remakes of Braun that have been made. And um, uh, to do that, we have uh, Lars Blomgren, Managing Director of Film Lands. Welcome. <laughs> and you've been on stage many times talking about this subject and many times even with me moderating and uh, we thought so what we should we do in this context and uh, what we did is that you put together a quite a long clip so could you introduce what we're gonna what you're about to see well there's a number of remakes that have been done and this is the it's the same scene on the bridge in four different versions and and um, uh, sadly enough, the, the Wiedemann and Berg team, our German production company or sister company, the ones that did Dark, I don't know if you yeah, can hear yeah, from that. Yeah, the Netflix series. They are in production with a fifth version called Their Pass, and they are actually shooting, unfortunately, exactly this scene, I think, tomorrow. So <laughs> we can't show that one. So that's between which countries? Austria and Germany. So it's yes. up, up on the mountains. Yeah. They arrive with one helicopter and the other police in another helicopter. So yeah. So should we... Take a look at the clip and then talk more. Yeah, let's do that. So you can roll the clip. <laughs> yeah, so that, of course, was the American, Mexican, and then the French, British, and the Estonian, Russian remake. Uh, Ran Telem was talking in the morning about how the bridge, the, the, the Mexican US version, got it all wrong because she goes up to the feet of the victim, not the head. What do you think about his theory? I don't know, Ron is much more clever than the rest <laughs> of us, probably. <laughs> so I know it's maybe like choosing which of your stepchildren is your favorite, but do you have a favorite remake? I think um, I can relate to the English-French one. That's the one that, that fits me best. Yeah. OK, and now uh, they're shooting the German-Austrian one, but there's some more. At least the rights have been sold to, to more countries. There's, right? one, there's an option for one very close to the greenlit between Serbia and Croatia. And then there's, and that's, that's like almost commissioned, but mm -hmm. then there's, there's plans on many parts of the planet. Cool. So it's, the bridge will not stop just because you're, you're stopping with the production of the Swedish, uh, Danish one. Um, so since we have you here, I, I want to ask you as well, how, how does it feel to be here at the, the end of this journey for you? Well, as you said, it doesn't end. I mean, it continues with new versions. But I, I must say I'm really happy about the decision. I think we, I think the four, this is a perfect way to end it. And I think we all miss proper endings. Mm. So I feel really content. It's a good, good way to end it. It's so, in, now it, I'm very excited to see what this end that you're all referring to actually means. That's going to be in, in three weeks. I think this is it. I don't know if there's a point giving you a car. You, you have several of these, but maybe you can re-gift it to a very, very lucky person. And thank you for coming and thank you for making this series that has meant so much to people personally and so much to the industry here in the Nordics. So thank you for that.